So you don't actually have to coordinate, um, you know, snapshot creation, then net backup goes or legato goes or whatever, and then backs up the data and then releases it. It just gets done if you do NDMP. You know, um, it's a nice integrated part of Solaris. So all you have to do is turn it on, set a password, and you know, you're good to go. Um, um, so supposedly it can do ZFS send receive in addition to doing dump tar. Um, but, you know, um, the code's sort of been in flux there, um, particularly because of the fact that the NDMP copy option is really all we've had, and I've really wanted to get around to writing my own client, I just haven't had the time. Um, so, but it does work very well. I've tested it with uh, Backbone and Legato, I think, and basically anything that had a free trial, because <laughs> I'm cheap. So some parting thoughts for you. Um, please do remember it is a transactional file system and I hate saying file system because it's not really a file system at all. It's a storage subsystem, a very complete storage subsystem. Um, always bear in mind that it is transactional and have an idea of what that entails, particularly because of this kind of breathing um, we actually see. Um, this does mean that you should probably so in a lot of cases, you're going to have to throw away years and years and years of your jumpstart training and your UFS training, um, or at least update it. Um, like I said, consult with, with the virtual file system layer before jumping to conclusions um, about device level activity. Um, and this is a fantastic opportunity. I know you're all dying to do this. It's a fantastic opportunity to rediscover your love for storage. And if you snickered, you really do love it. You just haven't spent enough time cuddling with it and holding it and telling it how much you care, or buying it flowers and, you know, remembering its birthday and stuff like that. Um, so spend some time with the code and D-trace. Um, you know, attempt to challenge some of your old assumptions, run tests, and, you know, always benchmark for fun and profit. Um, FileBench is a fantastic tool. Um, if you haven't used FileBench, please do. Um, but my advice with FileBench is that it's, it can spit out numbers at you and tell you IOP numbers and things like that. But it's not really its best suit. The best way to use FileBench is actually as a workload generator. So run FileBench and then use dtrace, um, use kstat tools, you know, use whatever, whatever you like to watch you know, system in, in terms of system observability and kind of see how things go. Um, and then finally, focus on the application. Um, more than ever, benchmarking application performance. Um, don't just assume system, you know, I.O. metrics are telling you the whole story. Um, if, you, if you, like I said, if you look at the, just the statistics because of these sort of breathing patterns and the way that it works and it's pulling things in and out of memory, statistically it's going to look very slow. You're going to see gaps, right? It's not writing to disk, therefore it's slow. Um, and that's not necessarily true. So before you get upset that it's slow, go and benchmark you know, your application. Go benchmark your database or whatnot. See how it's responding and whether or not it's getting the job done. Um, and it's, it, you know, it's, it's, it's a fun way to learn all kinds of things. Um, and use dtrace to explore the interaction between your application and the, the virtual file system layer. Right? There's a lot of goodness there. Um, so in open source, we really are a community. Um, and these are just a handful of insanely awesome people, right? Um, we owe a lot. Uh, all of you guys know Adrian Cockroft, um, Jim Morrow, who's in the back of the room and is awesome. Um, Richard McDougall and Brian Gregg. There's a lot of other guys, Maddie Roach, York. These guys are fantastic. And, you know, none of us really are ZFS experts. We just play one on TV is the way we put it. We're all learning, and if anyone knows how things actually work inside of corporations like Sun, they're doing the development, and they don't know all the performance ramifications. So they really rely on the internal groups and the entire community to test and see where it's good and where it's not, and they're iterating. We see a huge amount of iteration. And here's a couple of resources. Joint.com is my company. Cuddletech is my site. Um, Solaris Internals Wiki is a fantastic tool. Um, look there, if you've ever heard of the ZFS Evil Tuning Guide, right, you know the Solaris Internals Wiki. Um, but also blogs.sun.com and Planet Solaris. There's a lot of us blogging about this stuff, trying to share things. Um, 
a lot of us have spent a lot of years doing it, and now we're kind of moving on to other things because we kind of lost our eyesight staring at ZFS code. Um, so you know, hit Google, you'll find tons of resources. And that's it. What time is it? Woo! One minute to go! Awesome. Are there any questions or can we all just go over to the pub? Yes, sir. So when we're looking at ZFS in these types of situations, should we think of it any differently if what we're sharing out is Z pools as opposed to using it for base files? You should. In fact, one thing I would recommend, if you, if you do get into playing with it, I, I forgot to mention this, if you, if you really start to play with ZFS, I personally do not recommend using ZFS root. And the reason is, is that when you do your tests, you want to put I.O. strain on the system, and you want to know that that ZFS call is doing what you think it's doing. Um, I personally prefer to always do UFS root file systems. Um, that way, everything ZFS applies only to what I intended to be applied, you know, to apply for. Plus the fact that, you know, we all know how UFS reacts, and so it works very well for sort of a root file system. You give up the ability to do, you know, uh, boot environments and things like that, but, you know, if you're running Solaris Express, like me, until December, when it gets cut off, you know, it's, it's a good option. So, um, in production, you probably want to use boot environments, so you won't have that option, but, yeah, especially if you start, you know, uh, detracing things and, and whatnot, you can get into a kind of confusing state of, well, which pools actually this apply to? So, you know, if you can avoid using ZFS root, you know, do it. I'll take that one and then. Yeah, right. So, um, are you familiar with the quota system at all in ZFS? Um, how it's implemented, where it is on the file system layer, um, being before compression or after compression, or um, file system or file management after the user is reading quota? We ran into some issues in where users completely filled up their quota space, but we now have the end of ZFS. Um, The data set. Yeah. yeah, so this is one of the most common problems we run into at Joint because at Joint, right, fundamentally we're selling Solaris zones. Um, and when you do that, all of that's on a ZFS data set, and that ZFS data set is a certain size. Um, this can cause a problem. This is a problem we had early on when an administrator would have a user problem, would create a snapshot, or they would say they want, you know, they're doing some big migration and they want a snapshot of it. They create a snapshot and then we just forget. Right, user would forget, we'd forget. They can't even see it. Um, and then two months later, they're starting to get low on disk, and they think, well, I'll be a good citizen, and I'll clean up my disk. So they start deleting files like mad, and then all of a sudden run out of disk, and like, are scratching their head going, I, I just, for some reason, you know, gravity stopped working today, and I deleted files, and it just didn't help. Um, and that's because you're, yeah, you're fighting, you're fighting the snapshot. So you have to be very careful in the way that you manage snapshots and, and delete them when you can. When you look at the ZFS um, data set properties, you know, ZFS get all some data set, you're actually going to notice that there's, uh, you can set reservations and you can set quotas. So you, what you want to do is you want to set the quota at what you actually want the user to use, and you can set the reservation higher, which gives them overhead for snapshots. 